Hi students, as a part of Polymers, today I am going to discuss with you about the, the preparation of one of the elastomer. So one of the elastomer. What do you mean by elastomer? Simply the elastomer is nothing but the synthetic rubber. So in this category of the polymers, actually we are uh, supposed to discuss uh, the preparation or synthesis of uh, the three rubbers. The one is Bina S rubber, the second one is Butyl rubber and third one is Thiopol rubber. But uh, the Buna S rubber I am not going to discuss now because already I have explained the preparation or synthesis of uh, Buna S rubber while explaining the copolymerization. While explaining the copolymerization, uh, I have explained the copolymerization by considering the preparation or synthesis of a Buna S rubber as an example. So that, that is already done. So the second uh, elastomer about which I am going to explain to you is uh, the butyl rubber or OR, it is also called as isobutylene rubber or OR, polyisobutylene rubber or GRI, the GR stands for government isobutylene rubber. So, butyl rubber or isobutylene rubber or polyisobutylene rubber or government isobutylene rubber. So, all are one and same. Now, polyisobutylene is a polymer. So, since polyisobutylene is a polymer, what is the expected one? The expected monomer is isobutylene. Isobutylene. So, along with the isobutylene, little amount of uh, uh, isoprene is also considered during the preparation or synthesis of uh, this particular uh, elastomer. Right. That is 0 0.25 to 0 0.5% of isoprene is also used uh, for the preparation of polyisobutylene because so definitely by seeing or uh, by observing the, the name, the name is suggesting that, that is what is the polymer, polyisobutylene is the polymer. So since polyisobutylene is the polymer, the expected monomer is uh, the isobutylene, no doubt in it. But along with the isobutylene, we have to take the 0 0.25 to 0.5% of isoprene for the preparation of polyisobutylene or uh, isobutylene or GRI rubber. Now the most toughest job for the students is to remember the structures of the monomer. Now how many monomer units are required for the preparation of this particular uh, rubber students? The one is isobutylene and the second one is isoprene. So first uh, let us see the structures of uh, the isobutylene and isoprene. How the structures can be obtained. So it is very easy to obtain the structure of isobutylene and isoprene with the name itself. So first let us try to get the structure of isobutylene. Now what is isobutylene? So in order to get the structure of isobutylene, what we need to do is, we have to replace two hydrogens from one carbon of ethene by two methyl groups. So if you do this, then the ethene is converted into isobutylene. Right? So what is ethene? CH2 double bond CH2. CH2 double bond CH2. Now what you need to do is just expand or elaborate its structure as CH2 double bond place one hydrogen above the plane and place another hydrogen below the plane space. Place one hydrogen above the plane, place another hydrogen below the plane. Now replace this hydrogen and this hydrogen with the methyl. Replace this hydrogen and this hydrogen with methyl groups. Already have said. The structure of isobutylene can be obtained by replacing two hydrogens from one carbon of ethene 
by two methyl groups. And in order to get the appropriate structure of isobutylene, what we need to do is we have to place one hydrogen above the plane, another hydrogen below the plane, and we have to replace these two hydrogens, which is one above and another below the plane with two methyl groups. So now we got the structure of one of the monomeric unit strings. We got it. We got the structure of one of the monomeric unit. What is that? CH2 double bond C CH3 CH3. What is this? Iso vitalin. Plus what is another monomer? Another monomer is isoprene. Isoprene, right? Isoprene. Now, what is isoprene? Isoprene is nothing but two methyl, two methyl, one, three, butadiene. So, isoprene is nothing but two methyl, one, three, butadiene strings. Two methyl, one, three. Now, how to get the structure of this 2 methyl 1 3 beta diene, which is isoprene and whose quantity is just around 0 0.25 to 0.5% only? Alright, plus. So, what we need to do with the name, we have to get the structure, we have to extract the structure with the name itself. 2 methyl 1 3 beta diene. Good. Which stands for how many carbons? Four carbons. So good. One, two, three, four. So don't answer this. This is over. Four. Now what we need to do? We have to label the carbons. So we have to label the carbons. So one. Two, three, four. Good. Right. Now it is diene. It stands for double bond. Diene stands for two double bonds. Now, what is the position of these two double bonds? Uh, one and three. One and three. The position of first double bond is one. The position of another double bond is. 1, 3. So now we got the basic skeletal strings. Right. Basic skeletal. One more is left. 2 methyl. So at the second position, methyl 2. Now we got the basic skeleton. Now, this basic skeleton is not the structure of this uh, particular isoprene, which is the 2 methyl 1, 3 beta diene. So in order to get the uh, the appropriate structure from the basis skeleton which I have drawn on the board. What we need to do, as it is an organic molecule, we have to consider the valency of the carbon into a compound. As it is organic, it is organic carbon compound. So what we have to do is the valency of each and every carbon atom present in this molecule should be satisfied. Now, what is the valency of the carbon? The valence of the carbon is 4. So, since the valency of carbon is 4, we have to ensure 4 bonds around each and every carbon atom. If it is lacking bonds, then we have to place hydrogens instead. I hope you got it. So accordingly, first carbon. So surrounding it first, around the first carbon, how many bonds are there, students? One, two. But how many should be there? Four. So if it is lacking the bonds, what we need to do? We have to place the hydrogen. So one, two, so the remaining. Two. So around this carbon, so. 1, 2, 3, 4. 
so the valency of this carbon atom second carbon is satisfied so there is no need to place any hydrogen so this carbon let's see three three hydrogens one bond four done so coming to third one two three it is lacking one bond so what we need to do we have to place one hydrogen right so four around this carbon how many bonds are there two bonds are there it is lacking two bonds so what we need to do we have to place two hydrogens i hope you got it now this is the structure of uh, two methyl one three butadiene which is another monomer unit it is also called as isoprene students and how much amount of isoprene should be considered around 0.252 to 0.5% of isoprene should be considered so, i hope you got the structures of for the two monomeric units now now the functionality in both these molecules is one and same the functionality in both this monomeric unit is one i see what is the functional group the functional group in both of this isobutylene and isoprene is double bond only because both are alkenes so since the functionality is same there is a need to differentiate uh, these two molecules how by placing or by labeling uh, the two monomeric units with the different alphabets because the functional group is present present in the same two molecules one and same students in isobutylene the double bond is functional group uh, whereas in the case of isoprene also the double bond is a functional group so as a functional group is same we have to differentiate it so in order to differentiate it uh, so definitely one of uh, the monomeric unit should be represented by one alphabet another monomeric unit should be represented by another alphabet if the functional group is different then we can uh, label it with the uh, or represent it with the uh, the same alphabet so since so in order to differentiate uh, both these molecules what we need to do is we have to we have to use different alphabets let us say that n number of moles of isobutylene reacts with m number of moles of uh, two methyl 1 3 beta diene or isoprene students now the question arises that whether this two molecules undergo addition or chain group polymerization or or co polymerization already we know that when the addition of chain group polymerization is possible if single unsaturated both are unsaturated what do you mean by unsaturation double bonds if double bonds are there in the molecule then it is unsaturated one so if single unsaturated monomeric unit is present then it undergo addition or chain group polymerization but here we have two different unsaturated monomer so since two different unsaturated monomeric units are present both will undergo co polymerization so both will undergo co polymerization i hope uh, you got it why both will undergo the co polymerization if it is a single unsaturated monomeric unit then it will undergo the addition or chain group polymerization since both are different unsaturated monomeric units so they will undergo co polymerization rather than addition of chain group polymerization now during this polymerization what happens to it is whatever the double and single bonds which are there in the same plane whatever the double and single bonds which are present in the same plane are converted into single and double bond respectively double and single bond respectively single and double bond respectively so what is the plane what is the plane 
So let us say that this is the plane so this is the plane in the isotopic and this is the plane in the isoprene or 1 2 methyl 1 3 butyl ring now the change only occurs at the double and single bonds which are in the plane which are above or below the plane there won't be change keep this one accordingly <coughs> accordingly what happens so ch2 there is no change students don't become panicked by seeing the structure. Already have said whatever the double and single bonds which are present in the same plane will convert into single and double bond respectively during the copolymerization of two different unsaturated monomeric units. So accordingly, CH2. So this is in the plane. So the double bond converts to single bond. Next to C, the single bond is above the plane so there won't be any change so this is below the plane there won't be any change and whatever the number is there before the monomeric unit becomes subscript now what is the number n next what is that friends CH2 is there in the plane. The double bond, this is there in the plane. So this double bond is converted into single bond. And C, this is, this methyl group is above the plane. So it won't be converted. And, right? So next, this single bond is in the plane. So it converts to double bond. Next, CH. So this double bond is in the plane. So it will convert to next. So whatever the number which is there before the monomer unit becomes subscript for the. So what is that? M is there. So this is the structure of. Uh, the butyl rubber or isobutylene or polyisobutylene or government isobutylene rubber, whatever it is. So, by seeing this structure, final structure, you'll become panic. So no need to panic, it's very easy once you know the structures of uh, uh, the starting materials. So, try to get the, try to extract the structure. Try to extract the CH2 single bond, yes, the tail group is missing here. This is above the plane, so there won't be any change. Right? Okay. So, in this manner, you have to get the structure of the polymer, but don't memorize by writing uh, the structure or preparation or synthesis of uh, uh, the any of synthesis. Of the polymer by writing it on uh, the paper for 10 to 15 times. It's not needed. There is a concept behind it. Uh, please move or go with the concept. Uh, catch hold of that concept. Uh, with the help of the concept only, we can get the structure of uh, the monomeric units. Accordingly, we can get the structure of uh, the polymer. <coughs>